And now it's Boomer Life. Lifestyle ideas designed to make your life more engaging, meaningful, and complete. Celebrating the baby boomer generation, this is Boomer Life. Hello and welcome to Boomer Life on AM650. My name is Simone and today we are focusing on getting energized and shedding the blahs of winter. Joining me in studio is Greg Semcooley, who is a sales manager at NRX Botanicals and Carol Krenna who is a nutritionist and health journalist. Welcome. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. have you both back. Greg, tell us a little bit about your background and about NRX Botanicals. Well, I've been involved in the natural products industry for over three decades now, so going back a long ways to uh, the prairies in Calgary, Alberta, and working in a retail store out there, and kind of getting my foundation for the natural foods industry, and really kind of getting the feel for it, and, and uh, I think once you're in it, you kind of get hooked into it, and it's a great industry, kind of helping people, what they're all about, and uh, helping them get better, uh, dealing with that, what they're dealing with and their health problems, all that kind of stuff too. So, uh, But I've worked in retail, I've worked in um, distribution side of things, uh, and the manufacturing side also, and here for the last couple of years with NREX, which is a uh, local company here in Port Coquitlam, BC, and uh, just helping with them with their uh, sales and their abilities and growing the market and uh, we're a premium supplement line offering a wide range of different products and it's just great to be able to help people with their needs as they're trying to deal with their daily lives and uh, what they want to do to get better. And now that we're officially in spring, we are kind of getting out of that rut of, you know, maybe being a little lazier, not as active during winter and finding ways to feel energized. So we often hear about how tired people are these days. Why is that? Well, I think today, uh, today's schedules, the busy lives that everyone has, um, there's so many factors with that. Uh, you know, if you're, you've got a young family, um, you're on the go, you've got their activities always going, crazy busy schedules. If you're a little bit older, there's always the lifestyles, you're in a city, there's always the fast pace, there's always things on the go, uh, this to do, fix things around the house, and constantly uh, things there. So. Um, you know, that, that's part of it, whether or not you're eating right, uh, how you're eating, how often you're eating, those type of things, getting a good night's sleep. We tend to stay up later. We get to be caught behind our computers and, uh, you know, many widow computer widows out there <laughs> who uh, have their spouse who's late at night still checking things on, uh, on the computer with this and that. And so that impacts our schedules and our sleep patterns, and that certainly makes us tired as well, too. Um, you know, how we eat, what we're drinking, you know, looking at a lot of stimulants out there and the crashes that come out, uh, result out of that as well, too. So we feel that we're constantly, you know, on. fatigued and on all the time and don't really very often have that chance just to have a chance to have a break. Now, Carol, what causes energy drain and are there some foods to combat them? Uh, well, there's a lot of different things that, co that cause it and... Uh, uh, and we'll talk about a few of them today, but uh, if you really feel like your get up and go just kind of got up and went, one of the <laughs> big things is uh, something called neurotransmitters. That's chemicals in your brain. And people have probably heard of serotonin. That's one of them. And there's other ones called uh, dopamine and norepinephrine and GABA. And uh, serotonin, that's kind of your natural Paxil. It's your natural happy drug. And dopamine and norepinephrine, they're your natural caffeine, your energizers. And, and when you don't have enough of these, then you feel mentally and physically sluggish and tired and you just don't sparkle. You know what I mean, sparkle. And GABA, that's your natural uh, tension reliever, and it's like your, your um, natural volume, you could say. And uh, it takes away stress. And oh, we all know that if you have way too much stress, then you, you can't sleep and your energy dives. So these are all important for energy. And eating the right foods actually changes these chemicals in your brain. That's why uh, the supplements and food can actually make you feel more energetic. So what if you think you're doing everything you can possibly be doing? You're, you live an af active lifestyle, you feel like you eat a great diet, but you're still feeling drained. Is it because maybe the things you're putting in your body might seem okay to you, but you're really not reading those labels and taking the time to know if this is good for your body? 
Well, uh, just for, for neurotransmitters, for example, you need something called amino acids. And what do I mean by that? That's protein. And you can get protein, of course, from lean meat. But if you're a vegetarian or if you want to have a um, much more balanced, absorbable type of protein uh, and you're maybe staying away from something called acidity, which is in meat and, and dairy, uh, then plant protein is really the way to go. And uh, some types are... Uh, even like whole grains, like gluten-free millet and um, rice. Actually, brown rice is a really good uh, whole grain as well for, with lots of protein. And beans and lentils, of course, that's what vegetarians eat for protein. Um, and there's actually, though, a lot of good sources of protein that people don't even think about. And one of them is kelp and seaweed. And that's, okay. of course, like the wrapping that's on your sushi. But also you can get that in a supplement. And... Uh, something called spirulina, it's actually 65% protein. So that's just a little supplement you can take that's got lots of protein in it. Same with those, you know, wheat grasses. People are saying those really you green. You take a little wheat grass shot or exactly. things like that. Exactly. That's got tons of protein in it, but you don't really think about that. So if you don't know where to start, how does it work? How, where are you able to get this information if you want to know what's right for your body in terms of feeling energized? Where to get the information? Hmm. Well, you can read magazines. Okay. <laughs> Go online. <laughs> I, I think um, maybe a little bit of that is just my view is that very often foods we eat, so some of the good foods that Carol has just mentioned here, but then we think of some of the bad foods. So mm -hmm. if you're eating chips and, you know, the fast food burgers and stuff like that, and, and you have to listen to your body a little bit to say, okay, how do I feel after that? Do I feel energized? Do I feel like I could, you know, take a good walk or go for a run or exercise? Do I feel like I'm going to slouch into the couch now? So part of that is, too, the good fats and some of those things as well, too, that will drain us down. And you know, listen to your body a little bit. How does your body react to some of those foods? Do you feel energized or not? Are you feeling sluggish? Exactly. It's what you're putting in your body. Now, uh, Carol, you mentioned a, a lot of foods that we could be using that are great for this. Um, Greg, there might be some people that would find these suggestions a challenge to be doing things like that. So what are some other things that you can use to help you get that energy back? Well, I think... Um, a good diet, as Carol mentioned, a variety of diet uh, is, is a great thing as well, too. Timing of your diet, so make sure you are eating regularly. So skipping meals and then all of a sudden I'm really hungry and now I've got to have that meal and then you kind of have another meal or overeating, those type of things. So all those things kind of have an impact on your digestive system and have, uh, you know, either beneficial or negative uh, way of giving you that energy. So I think regular eating patterns is a big part of that too. And maybe not too much. So if you're overeating, then that takes a lot more energy by your body to break that down as compared to maybe having smaller meals more frequently. I think, Carol, you mentioned something about um, uh, how often... Uh, you yeah, you yes, yes, that's right. Uh, uh, definitely the balancing of protein and carbs is very important. They're like partners, you could say. So every time you eat a meal, and you should be eating every three to four hours because your blood sugar, sugar dips every three to four hours, and you eat the protein and the carbs together. That's really important to think about that not only to, to balance your blood sugar, but I was just talking about the neurotransmitters. And actually, for protein to get absorbed into your brain, it needs a good carb too. So that's another reason that you need to think about protein and carbs together. So uh, if you're running around, you're really busy, and you, you uh, want to grab a quick snack, uh, then most or a lot of people just take a piece of fruit, but that's actually not good enough, right? That's just the carb. You need the protein. So it, that could mean like the trail mix. It's got the nuts and the the um, the fruits that is a good mix, but also greens, a green supplement, something like that, because it's actually got the good carbs and the protein together. And you'll find that that actually helps your blood sugar stay balanced so you'll keep the energy nice and high and also helps the neurotransmitters so good two in one and what's kind of the ratio what's the percentage of carbs you should have what's the percentage of protein you should have per meal what what should that look like you know i don't even think you need to worry about that just completely relax about 
how much of each just make sure you've got a little bit of both of them so whether it's like a, a whole rye cracker with some nut butter on it or even when you think about the way we eat we, we eat vegetables and a little bit of protein for dinner right so that's that's the way to keep it nice and balanced as well if you're just joining us on Boomer Life on AM650, my name is Simone Graywall. In studio with us today, we have Greg Semcooley, the sales manager at NRX Botanicals, and Carol Krenna, who is a nutritionist and health journalist. And we're basically talking about focusing on getting energized. Now, we mentioned greens. Tell us a little bit about greens, the product, Greg. Well, greens is a, a little bit different than what many people commonly think of it. We think of our green vegetables, and people go, oh, I, I eat healthy, or perhaps you don't. There are often who... People I come across, they say, oh, yeah, I'm not a really a green vegetable fan, and so I don't like the broccoli, or I'm not a spinach fan, or some of these even darker leafy vegetables like kale or collards. So, But greens as a product itself is very different than this. Greens is, um, is a combination of different grasses. And in this case, it's typically uh, an alfalfa grass, a barley grass, an oat grass, a millet as well, and kamut, which is an ancient wheat grass. It's a, uh, one that hasn't actually been hybrid as the other wheats have been uh, over the last many, many um, centuries. So it's a combination of these different grasses that offers a different nutritional profile than your regular vegetables. So it's not a substitute for your diet of good fresh vegetables or even cooked steamed vegetables in your diet as well too it's really adding something more a lot more different nutritional value so these grasses uh, actually are very nutrient dense they have a lot of protein in them as well as the carbohydrates so there's a good balance into unto themselves they have a great profile of the uh, nutritional compounds so you're going to get a lot of uh, beta carotene uh, vitamin b's in there vitamin k's in there trace minerals as well so there's a lot of different compounds in there that really make them nutrient dense that provide a lot of value to our body and I just like to say that most people don't eat enough vegetables. Like they, they've found that Canadians eat maybe two to three servings of vegetables a day, whereas really the optimum is five to ten. And we often too, when we go to the grocery store, we reach for our three or four favorites, right? We we like our beans and our potatoes, but. The uh, Canada Food Guide says we're supposed to get a rainbow of colorful fruits and vegetables. Why is that we need a rainbow? It's because the, the different colors, say the purple in beets and the green in kale and the orange in carrots, that actually shows that they have different nutrients in them. So that's why we should need to grab all sorts of different colors. And so there are actually over 2,000 different nutrients. Not that we need them all every day, but to make ourselves optimally healthy to avoid disease it's really important to get a lot of those different nutrients so the greens actually they provide like hundreds of concentrated nutrients all together so if you're not getting all those different vegetables every day it's just a great way to supplement it to know that you're getting those actually 47 different nutrients we need just as a baseline every single day and that actually can certainly help with having just a green drink once a day now, what are some, so when you're taking the greens, how much do you need to take and how does it work when uh, going into your body? Yeah, it's very simple. It's really a powder format. And so you're taking about two teaspoons, two heaping teaspoons of that in a, uh, a daily dose, basically. You could take more if you want, but really that's a, a good amount to take on a daily basis. And that's simple enough just to mix with a glass of water. You could mix it with a little bit of juice if you wanted for some flavor as well, too. These are grasses, so you're going to get that taste of a grass. I was just going to ask, what is the taste like? You know, yeah. and, and it's funny on that because some people kind of go, oh, I guess it's like any vegetable, you know, oh, I don't like broccoli, mm, no, uh, and others go, I love that product. So um, it really is a personal taste too. One of the key, th um, I think, experiences that I've come across with many people is that they may not l like it initially because it kind of has a different flavor. I think in our modern society today, we have the preferences for the sweet and the salty, but we have lost the taste preference for bitters. And that's one of the foods that we should have as well, too. So you get those fermented vegetables, Because everything you eat, you want it to taste good. Exactly. But that's not the case. So with this type of product, you... Some people may not like it initially because they're so accustomed to those sweet and salties, but you know what? After about a week, two weeks, their body craves this. Their body really likes it because it's good food. It's good nutrition. It's supplying them a lot of the nutrients that they need, and their body knows it. Our mind tends to override what our body wants, and that's just a great example because our body really, really wants it in, the, in a short time period. 
and uh, and I would like to say that that one of the the another good point actually with with energy is that some people lack certain hormones and uh, particularly um, iodine in, for the thyroid hormone and that is comes with the greens too so some of these greens you just get used to eating uh, it's like kale kale people say um it's kind of bitter sometimes and yet it's the kind of the new trendy it's a new trend yeah, to have kale chips exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But, but some people are drenching salt on them so <laughs> you might not be getting the full benefits but but those yes they're a little bit bitter but when you think about energy again back to energy those really green vegetables that might be a little bit more bitter have so many different nutrients like the iodine for your thyroid if you have hypothyroidism or if you're a little bit low and the thyroid is hypothyroidism uh, really affects your metabolism so that of course decreases your energy if you've got a low metabolism and also like iron and b12 they're often if you're low on those then you're going to have low energy and you get b12 and iron where from green veggies so your kale and your uh, you know your your lettuces and your spinach they've got the b12 um, and your iron. And um, I actually found myself when I was supplementing with B12 and a lot more vegetables with it in it, I became a lot more uh, energetic. We're talking about focusing on your energy on Boomer Life AM 650, and we'll be back with more information on how you can balance your meals to keep your energy stable. Stay with us. Canada's only weekly radio show dedicated to the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on AM 650.